Hi, I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. This is Sister Power on Think Tech Hawaii. Also, I'm president and founder of Sisters Empowering Hawaii, Hawaii's foremost women's empowerment organization. April is International Blit Black Women's History Month. My special guest, Judge Vavon Bauer and attorneys Daphne Barbie Wooten and Leslie Matthews. Ladies, welcome back to Sister Power. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So glad to see you, ladies. You know, Sisters in Parring Hawaii has had the opportunity to honor each one of you at Women Making History, and your vibe attracts your tribe. Before we get started, ladies, please tell us, tell our Sister Power viewers a little bit about your background, starting with Judge Bavon, Daphne, and then Leslie. Well, thank you, Sister Sharon, for first of all, inviting me to be part of this wonderful gathering of women. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm Bavon Bowers. I am a family and district court for DM judge for the Second Circuit for the state of Hawaii. I'm also the executive director of Maui Mediation Services, one of the five community mediation services across the state. I am a bar examiner for our state's judiciary. I'm also vice president of the African American Lawyers Association, a proud member of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, and a diehard St. Louis Cardinals fan as I was born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. And that's me in a nutshell. Thank you for having me. Wow. Daphne. Well, thank you for inviting me. I, it's an honor to be here in this show with all of these wonderful women, women of color, African-American women. Um, I'm just glad that we're here in this space in Hawaii. And so thank you for including me. I am an attorney. I've been practicing for a long time. I'd say over 40 years here in Hawaii. Um, and I was a former bar examiner. And I um, do civil rights laws. That's my specialty. And I've also branched out into writing. So um, that's me. Leslie. Aloha, ladies. It is always good to be in uh, the same space as you all. My name is Leslie Matthews. I am an attorney, a social worker. I am also the president of the African American Lawyers Association. I grew up here on Maui and returned to Maui to practice law. I also am a lecturer for the William S. Richardson School of Law at the University of Hawaii and the School of Social Work. I love being out in nature and the water is my peace place when I'm not in court. Uh, that's the way I like to decompress. I am the proud daughter of Rainy Doc Matthews, um, Maui County's first Black commissioner on the Maui County Commission on Persons with Disabilities, and an auntie to Kana Grace and Amelia Love. Mm, wonderful, wonderful. You know, I'm just in awe of you ladies. I mean, you know, we're we're celebrating International Black Women's History Month right here on Sister Power. So this is awesome. And thank you for everything that you do. So Judge Bowers, I'll start with you. Are there any obstacles to your job as a judge? Well, it really depends on what you mean when you say obstacles, because what when I was first given this privilege, and honestly, that's what it is to be able to serve as a judge, district court is oftentimes called the people's court because most people will have interactions with our judicial system in district court, unless it's a more convoluted or a more intense type of interaction. And yet to serve there, because right now our entire judicial system is under attack. Mm -hmm. And so to be able to represent the laws, our judiciary, and providing people with the service of democracy, of having disputes settled, in a final manner, that takes a certain type of mindset, a certain type of skill set. So the hurdle would be being prepared, being confident, being compassionate, 
Because if you're lacking any of those three, you're going to have a harder road to hold if you're here to serve our community. And I see the position of a judgeship of that as service. You know, I, I just want to ask you a quick question, though, Judge. I know we have about uh, half a dozen Black judges on TV right now, um, from Judge Hatchett to the Judge Cutlers. Now, if one of the networks were to come and knock on your door, would you accept to be a host there in Maui as a judge? You know, I've got a unique perspective on that, and I will tell you why. Before I started practicing here in Hawaii, I was practicing in Tennessee. And I don't know if you remember Judge Joe Brown, because yes. he had a show. Yes. He came from Memphis. And a lot of the way he presented himself on the show, he did in that jurisdiction. Now, of course, they add the theatrics. And I tell people, do not look at those TV court shows. They will get you in trouble if you think you can come in and act like that. However, it seemed to be we went from when game shows were popular to now court shows are popular. That's TV people. That is not real life. And at all times, there will be decorum maintained. There is a certain process. And you don't get to come in and clown. And more importantly, the judges don't get to talk down to you because we are required to treat people with respect and decorum. So TV shows and real court distinctly different, I say. But to answer your question, right now, that is not my focus, maybe in a bit. But if I do, it would be a real judge show and not something there for who tolerates and entertainment. Yeah. Okay. I do not wanted to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Daphne, no worries. Attorney Daphne, how do you lead with courage even when you are met with diversity? You're a civil rights attorney and I just admire the things that you do. Uh, well, first of all, I want diversity. I embrace diversity. I love diversity. So um, that's something that I fought all my life to get. For example, when I first came to Hawaii and was practicing law, we only had one female judge in the whole state of Hawaii judgeship. One. That's a shame. It has since, through advocacy and through uh, political um, pushing, we've gotten a whole lot more women, and not just women, but more diverse in terms of the ethnicities. Um, so in the state of Hawaii, I think it's a very diverse judgeship. We um, judiciary. We do need more diversity, though. We, we have, uh, uh, in my opinion, far too few African Americans. And uh, Judge Bazan uh, Bowers is the only one now, and she's on Maui. We need, well, the only one in district court. We don't have any in the uh, state judiciary, but we have other ethnicities in Hawaii as well. Um, I would like to see more uh, Samoans, um, Micronesians. But, ooh, I don't believe we have a Micronesian judge yet. Um, and so we want to represent the entire state, not just two or three um, top ethnicities. And definitely we have come a long way with more judges who are female than when I first started. But in terms of adversity, which is different from diversity, um, there has been a lot of diverse uh, adversity towards people who are not in the mainstream, um, people who represent those who are not in the mainstream. Um, and you just have to plow through it. If you lose a case, you appeal it. And hopefully someone higher than the judge you got will see that there's been errors and or see that there needs to be justice there. And it has happened in a lot of my cases that I've had to appeal because the judge was biased, um, because of, of, of certain things that happen in court. I have been fortunate to get a lot of my appellate rulings in my favor and actually made good law as a result of it, especially with regards to discrimination, discrimination on ancestry, sex, sexual harassment. Um, and so uh, you just have to keep going. And that's the importance of having lawyers, a diverse group of lawyers, is because, as you know, until we had NAACP and Thurgood Marshall, we didn't have lawyers who really went the full gamut in um, obtaining equal justice under the law. And to Brown versus Board of Education by Thurgood Marshall, a Black attorney who represented um, Black constituents 
And so we need the same here in Hawaii, but also on the federal bench, we've had our first Black male judge this year, thanks to efforts African American Lawyers Association, which Leslie is the president. Um, now, this is what, 2024? Why did it take so long? But I'm happy we got it. And we'll just keep pressing on until we get more diversity. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, Leslie is the president of the um, African American Lawyers Association. Leslie, what have you accomplished being president? Well, I am just so thrilled to have, you know, two of my mentors here. I tell Daphne often I would not have gotten through law school in the way I did without the support of the African American Lawyers Association. So to return now as the president um, and lead this organization is really great. During my presidency, uh, Judge Bavon Bowers, our first black judge, black female judge for Maui County uh, was uh, sworn in. We also, as, as um, uh, Daphne mentioned, we also have Judge Micah Smith. Uh, and we also have Judge Maloyan. So during my presidency, there's been three Black judges uh, sworn in. Uh, and that is a difference and a change. And I'm leaving here in just a few hours to uh, go to my big mama, my great aunt Maggie's funeral service. She was 96 years old uh, and just passed away. And she tells me a story about when she was, there was a hotel in Dallas where Black workers couldn't even go in the front door. There was a specific work, specific door just for Black workers to go into. And we went back for high tea just a few years ago for her birthday. And that was one of the first times she had ever walked into the front door. And this mm -hmm. is just two generations away from me. So it's a big deal when we have, we, we can walk through the front door. It's a big deal when we have Black attorneys and Black judges sitting on the bench and administering justice. And to do so with such an incredible group is just the thrill of my lifetime. And I do it. She would say, I got a, I got a niece that's an attorney over there in Hawaii. And so I want to continue to uh, walk in her legacy and, and continue in the trail that she has blazed for us. Well, you definitely, Leslie, have our condolences, you know, and definitely yes. safe journey, too. Oh, that sounds so, it's just so inspiring to hear you say that. Um, judge Bowers, how did you become a judge on Maui? <laughs> I have to admit, I did not take a traditional route to the judgeship, much less to the practice of law. For the first 40 years of my life, I was a professional radio announcer. I mm -hmm. still do voice work. And yet, about 20 years ago, when that industry started changing, I actually bet a co-worker. I was the music director. She was promotions director. What can we do to stay in this industry? We like entertainment. The parties are fun. We like the musician. Uh, let's go to law school. Okay. Who does that? We made a bet. We both took the LSAT. We both passed. We both applied to two law schools, Ole Miss and University of Memphis. We both got in. So that's how I got to law school, but I was still on the air. And even then, because I don't have a family of lawyers, my background, besides radio, I was always involved in nonprofits and in community uh, social agencies. But upon graduating, I thought, oh, I still want radio. Moving here, by that time, I'd had enough of a practice in family law, in juvenile defense. So I, I found my niche. And yet coming here, and starting to work with our foster care system, at one time I was the uh, special services, uh, special counsel for our foster care system, a role that Attorney Matthews now holds. It was just the next step in providing more service. When the opportunity came to become one of those to listen to the stories, and that's what I think a judge needs to be charged with doing, listen to the stories, and apply the law. I had that opportunity. I was blessed with the appointment. I hold it in the highest regard every day. And before I step on that bench every day, I say a prayer mm -hmm. that my steps are ordered, that my words are ordered, and that I speak the truth. So 
but that is how I became a judge. Amazing, amazing. Daphne, how are you, because you're such a motivator and you have empowered so many people, how are you paving the way for other aspiring Black female lawyers? Well, I get a lot of questions from people who want to be lawyers, and I encourage them to apply to law school. And we have an African-American female dean here, by the way, at the University of Hawaii. She's in one of the photographs. That's Camille Nelson, right on. She's the first woman dean at the University of Hawaii Law School, as well as being the first African-American. And um, so what I do is I tell people about uh, Dean Nelson, and, and I say, if you want to go to law school, why don't you give her a call? Um, or if you want to talk to anybody who's been through law school, I'll say, call Leslie Matthews, <laughs> who went to the University of Hawaii Law School. Um, and I also did write a book about African-Americans in Hawaii, and I included a Black law professor um, who was one of the first um, law professors for the University of Hawaii Law School. And, um, and, and so I try to encourage people and show them that it's been done before. Um, and not to be afraid or intimidated um, by becoming a lawyer um, and, and to, you know, to grab, to grab and to pursue what you love. And if you like law or you want to be uh, uh, an aspiring attorney, um, go to, you can even go to the courts. I tell some of my clients who are even in high school or, or their children, why don't you go to this case? Why don't you go watch this? I even have people who want their daughters to come and watch me in court. And I say, yeah, and I'll pick a case for them to come and watch. Um, and they'll see firsthand what it's like to be a lawyer. Um, and they'll see it is a lot of hard work, but it's fun. Mm. It's fun part. Well, Leslie, then tell our Sister Power viewers, tell us about the process of getting into law school. Sure. So law school is definitely, it's not, it's not easy, but I will say that, you know, what I've been able to do since becoming an attorney has been worth it. It's worth it to go through law school. And I would say to those of you that are thinking about going to law school, are you, be involved and engaged in your community. That is, I think, one of the biggest differences is how connected are you to your community? What are you doing to serve your community? Uh, because service doesn't start once you, you get your law license or you uh, graduate law school. What are you doing to already serve your community? Uh, I ha I teach social work in the law for both the law school and the school of social work. And I have some incredible students who are out there advocating at the legislature for change. They are taking part in their community in various ways. If you can, see if you can, um, you know, volunteer or intern at a, at, a, at a law firm or get a job at a law firm or, you know, something involved in the community. I would also talk to us, talk to us, um, that, because I didn't have a lot of attorneys in my family. And so it was, it was I had to rely on, on people like Daphne with Aala to be able to shepherd me through that. And so study hard. Will you take the LSAT or the GRE and know that you are more than a test score. So if your test score doesn't come back the way you wanted it, go for it again. I knew since I was 10 years old that I wanted to be an attorney and there wasn't anybody that was going to stop me. And, um, you know, so I am living my dream. I get to see other people become uh, attorneys. A, a young girl stopped me as I was going into court when I was a prosecutor. She says, hey, what are you doing? And she said, what do you do? I said, I'm an attorney. She said, I didn't know girls could be attorneys. And I told her, go back and you talk to your school counselor and tell her you're interested in law school. And we have to be able to shatter stereotypes about the places we are and aren't allowed to be and show up in those places and show up in all your greatness and fullness. So reach out to us, um, see how we can help you. But definitely, if you're interested in law school, go for it. You know, you mentioned something I... I um read across this author and her book is why women and people of color in law still here you don't look like a lawyer that was an excellent uh it was an excellent read i know you ladies know all about it but that's mm -hmm. a good book for our viewers out there 
Now, this question, ladies, is for everybody. We'll start with you know, Judge Bowers and Daphne and then Leslie. Tell us, tell the Sister Power viewers about a Black female lawyer that smashed the glass ceiling and changed the America legal landscape. Judge? You know, there are several but I have to bring up one that I had the privilege of meeting just this past weekend, and that is Judge Gail Williams Byer. She was just here. She was lecturing our judiciary, our full-time judges from across the state. She's the administrative and presiding judge of the South Euclid Municipal Court in South Euclid, Ohio, and she is the first African-American elected to this seat in the city's history. She is also the vice president for the American Judges Association, not the Black judges, the American Judges Association. She is bad. And she <laughs> was just here. And you know what? I made it a point to get the email because that's what we have to do. When we meet one another, we have to support one another. We have to lift one another up and be there for one another. And she was just as open to me as I was to making that overture. And on that, I'll say, don't be scared. If there's somebody you want to meet or someone that's doing something you'd like to do, talk to them. Because somebody helped them. Somebody, I had multitude of people help me. So that's my answer. Well, networking is never out of style. Daphne? Yes, I mean, I just loved what Judge Bowers said. Um, it's always continue. We're always continuing to meet people and help people and lift people up. Uh, I mean, that's the beauty of, the, of it all. That's the positive part about it. Um, I haven't had the um, chance to meet her, but of course, I'm inspired by Justice Katanji Brown Jackson, who was the first woman, African American woman, to be appointed to the Supreme Court. And I think it was only 2022. Was it? I mean, that's a that's a shame. The Supreme Court's been in existence since the, the over hundreds, two hundred years, and but it's it's happening. It's happening now. And I read her decision. I read her decision from before um, she was appointed um, by uh, President Biden, and I loved how she handled herself during the confirmation hearings. And I'm I'm lo mm -hmm. loving following her decisions. And I'll stop there. But there's a whole lot of women of color, women who are black who you can follow. Um, it, you'll just have to you know how to use a computer and also pick up the phone and, and see if you can meet some of them. Thank you. Mm, yay. Leslie. I would love for African American uh, Lawyers Association to host Justice Katanji Brown Jackson. And so she is one of my highlights. And just in her words, she said, I have received so many notes from little girls around the country who tell me that they are excited for this opportunity that they have thought about the law in new ways. Because I am a woman, because I am a Black woman, we want, I think, a country for everyone to believe that they can do things like sit on the Supreme Court and also have meaningful numbers of women and people of color. And it supports uh, public confidence in the judiciary. And she has shattered that ceiling. We know that we are still walking around on the shards of glass that as they as as we break that glass ceiling but it's worth it and the other person i would say would be judge bobby edmonds who was a judge in texas when i was still a, a academic counselor and still serving as a social worker she said you know you should go to law school she said when i sign my name judge bobby edmonds people listen to me and it's not about them listening to me but it's about them listening to the same people that i've advocated for so it gives me a lot of pride to say, you know, Leslie Matthews, on behalf of my client and and raise their issues to the judiciary and let their issues be heard. And uh, people are still getting used to seeing black women in these spaces. <laughs> they are still getting used to it. But I love it. I love serving. And I'm so thankful to the people that have helped me along my journey. Ladies, in closing. You know, this is, we just need really a part two, you know, Black women uplifting each other, telling our stories, honoring our legacies. 
each one of you have a minute to encourage a sister power viewer out there, starting with Judge Bowers. Thank you again for the opportunity to sit and share with my sisters here. I am speaking to you, the great granddaughter of slaves. That was not that long ago. I am standing upon the shoulders of all of my ancestors that suffered, that willed themselves, that knew the value of education and that knew they wanted a better life for those that came after them. And that is what I have taken on. I am so very proud that I have a 23-year-old niece who is right now in her first year of law school at St. Louis University Law. And there was so many years that we didn't see ourselves. We are now seeing more and more, and we need to continue to support and do everything we can to uplift and encourage and welcome more of a diverse group, not just Black females, just diversity. Stop using diversity as a witch word because it's, it's been vilified, and that's a whole different topic, but we are here, we're not going anywhere, and we're going to be stronger, and you're getting stronger every day. Attorney Daphne? Yes. Um, I would tell you there's room at the table. There's always going to be room at the table. So get your seat and move into that table and sit there and um, like you that, that uh, play Hamilton, you know, make sure you're there in the room when it happens. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Attorney Leslie. Yes. To my young Black women, to the young girls, you can absolutely do that. As Daphne said, there is a seat at the table. And guess what? If there's not a seat at that table, you build your table and you invite other people to come and sit with you. Um, we just celebrated the Ululehua Scholars Program at the law school. Uh, it's a, it is a, it's a um, social justice and a diversity program there. And I just am so appreciative for everybody that has believed in me and for all the people that who, who haven't, they um, caused me to want to go even further. And I'll end my words in thanking the Black women who have come before me to blaze a trail. I will never be able to thank you enough, but I'll always love you, remember you, and keep fighting just for you. Wow. You know, as Shirley Chisholm said, if you don't have a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. That's what you need to do is bring a folding chair. And, you know, in closing, I want to thank Judge Bowers and Attorney Daphne, Barbie Wooten, Attorney Leslie Matthews for your wisdom for your expertise and your time. You ladies are busy, busy, busy. And I want to close with something that Maya Angelou said. One of her quotes that you say, I can't believe my good fortune. I'm so grateful to be a Black woman. I would be jealous if I were anything else. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough. Aloha. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. We will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.